Lord your God. Amen. Amen. Do you know what he's saying there? First part of the chapter is, I'm going to destroy the nation. And then he says, I'm going to put it back together. You know, all the way through the Bible, it seems that God hates sin. He's going to bring down those who are in sin until they get it, until they repent. And then he's going to restore them and build us back. You know, I guess that's one of the, the greatest messages of the Bible. And it's God's will that none perish, that all should be brought unto repentance. That's the heart of God. You know, you think about everything else. I don't know what we're, we're trying to get out of God or power, you know, whatever. But the bottom line, the bottom line is that we get saved and allow Him to transform our life. That's the bottom line. What do you think that you want to try to get out of God? I mean... We're human beings. We, you know, we all think like I got to get something out of this or whatever. But, but God's trying to say, look, I'm cha I change the way you think. I've got the plan. You have no idea. Watch this. Let me have control. Why don't you make up your mind? Why don't you let it fall the way I want it to fall and quit trying to mess around and trying to tell me what to do? But He says, well, your your people, you go ahead and do what you want to do until you you hit bottom. And then to realize it's not going to work, then hopefully you'll start to listen. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, God, just give me the words to speak. God, you've given me a message, and I just pray that this simple, simple message, that yet again is probably one of those profound things that can happen, is people wanting to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You know, I was, when I grew up, I had a, a strong-willed mind. How's that? And I looked around and saw how other people were doing it, and I didn't want to do it that way. I wanted to be my own man, do my own thing. Anybody else here like that? Amen. And my sweet mother, she was a Christian, she loved the Lord. She, I don't know how she had patience with me, but I do. Because God gave her that gift. To love her kids. Because she loved the Lord, she loved us, sacrificed for us, unbelievable. And she loved it. She put us first. After God. And I, I, you know, I always didn't seem to be a selfish bone in her. How many others know what I'm talking about? Now how can that be? Because that's not the way human nature is. Now me, well that's my mom and I got all kinds of problems. She loves me. She's behind me. Now I get to get, do what I want to do and every time I mess up I just go back to her and she's going to help me out. And my sweet mom says, son, I loved you, but you're ordered. <laughs> she said, son, why do you always have to try to put the square peg in the round hole? Well, I said, well, you keep, you keep at it long enough, you're going to wear it down, and it's going to fit. <laughs> oh, there's a lot, this is, can you make up your mind that that ain't going to work? How many of you know I'm talking about? Let's, let's do it this way. There's a better way and there's an easier way besides. If it's cut right, you ain't going to have to grind the, the, the edges off and it's going to fit all the way down the way it's supposed to fit. So why are you kicking against the grain? Yes. <laughs> and I, you know what? Well, the first time I heard that, I said, I don't know. But I got to I got to figure this thing out for myself. And God, just like my mom, of course, she loved me, but he loved, loved me a lot more, just like he loves each and every one of us. Sweet, let's just go. Now, I never really turned against God, but I never really turned to him. I mean, I was raised that, you know, this is a Christian nation, and, you know, you just do your own thing. When you get a little older, you know, you, you're worn out or whatever, you can't have any fun anymore. That's when you turn to God. <laughs> well, the funny part of it was, I got worn out trying to grind the edges down and nothing seemed to work. You know, did you ever get to the point that you can't seem to succeed in anything? And you're trying? Anybody else like that here? Oh yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Well, there's a lot of sinners here then. And finally I got to one day and realized, hey, there's got to be something wrong here. What is it? And I'm looking for it everywhere. I thought I'd go to college and find it. Man, all I got there was more screwed up. 
They know how to mess up your mind, by the way. Then I said, well, you know what? I like to have fun. I guess Mike Solomon, only my own way. I like the Far East, out the Orient. I was over there for 18 months in the military, and I had a pretty good time. I mean, you know, and I, got, I did pretty good on the job, but then off the job, I didn't do so good. But I had did good because I had fun. But talking about sticking a square peg in the round holes, they said, son, you can't do this. They kept taking my stripes away from me. But you understand what I'm saying? And then I said, well, I'm going to go back go to college. That's where I'm back. And then they're going to pay for it. So that's why I'm back and went to college. That's where I met Louise. And sure enough, three years later, I graduated from college. Was this thought in my mind? I ain't done yet. I said, you know what? I don't want to be get a job as an insurance underwriter. That's what college graduates in those days were getting. And Boy Scouts needed some executives. And, I thought, man, I like the Boy Scouts. Said, no, no. I'm going back to the Orient. I ain't done with that yet. So I go to Vietnam in the middle of the war as a civilian for fun. Thinking, man, this is it. This is exciting. How many starting to listen? How many is willing to say, wait a minute now? You did all that? Were you crazy? Oh, I don't know about all that. But it didn't work. But I had my mind made up. I was going to do what I wanted to do. And thank God I had enough whatever is inside me to do it with all I had. I had my mind made up. Finally, when I realized it didn't work, I didn't know where to go. Going to devil worship, trying to seek to find the truth, trying to find the answers. Did some crazy stuff, divorced Louis, on and on and on. Well, I couldn't. I was looking for answers, but I had my mind made up. And finally, God got a hold of me. Amen. And I'll tell you how he did it. And it wasn't some old fat preacher in a three-piece suit. It was what I saw in people. Because I had it all down up here. I don't know what the truth is. The truth's going to set me free. And I know all that stuff. And what is the truth? I'm looking for the truth. That's what I've been looking for all my life. And I found it, and God tricked me in a revival service, but it wasn't the preaching. It was the manifestation of the power of God in people's lives. And that's all it took. I'm not from Missouri, but you show me, and they did show me. And once God showed me, listen to me, once he showed me, that's all it took. I said, I'll tell you something, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to take that made up mind and change it and make it up the other way. You know, I'm going to go for this with all my heart, mind, and soul. God, I'm not going to back down, not at all. I tried it the other way, and I really messed up. It didn't work. I'm done with it. Because of the joy, the peace that you've given me, the clarity of mind, because you're giving me a new mind, new heart. I'm starting to understand it. And I feel like I've been born again. Amen. And I was born again. And God, except to be born again, you can't see it. But once you're born again, you can see it. But here's the deal. I thank God that I, I got set, messed up so bad with inside me, in this thing up here, trying to figure it all out, then when I heard the truth, I said, I can just let it all go, make up my mind, set my mind on one thing. You know what the Bible says? Because the Lord helps me. How many believe the Lord can help you? I'll not be dismayed. I'll set my face like flint to do His will, and I will prosper. And that's where I'm at right now. Set my face like flint to do His will, and I'll prosper. Amen. Now, i got a big old long sermon here, and there's many ways to go, but just before I walked in here, God changed my mind a little bit. And He said, who else was doing it wrong? In chapter 9 of Acts, the very first verse, and Saul, everybody get there? I know I go too fast sometimes. Chapter 9 of Acts. You know what? We're in 29 right now. Amen. You know what that means? There's only 28 chapters of Acts in the Bible. 
But it's a progressive thing. It's an ongoing thing. We're living 29. The book of Acts, 29. Praise God. That means, you know what they did? We're going to take what God's given us and go on and accomplish great and mighty things. Living this life to the fullest. And by the way, what I'm talking about living to the fullest, that means you, you get blessed yourself. You don't have to give up this or give up that. All you're giving up is misery and pain and struggle and hurt. That's all God wants you to give up. That's the truth. And I'll tell you something, he'll make your relationships better, he'll make your life better, you put him first, his kingdom is righteous, things just seem to go your way, he knows what you need, and he gives you what you need before you even ask, but then, he puts something else in your heart, he says, now I want you to go show people what I've done in your life, preach the gospel, and that's how we do it, is by our own life, showing people what God's been able to do in us, he can do in them also, amen? Then Saul, still breathing, threatening and slaughters, murders against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked for letters from him, the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any that were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. In other words, he's going to persecute the Christians. And he journeyed and he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Why are you trying to put the square peg in the round hole? Why are you swimming upstream? Why are you trying to do it your own way? All of a sudden, Saul says, Hmm, who are you, Lord? Then the Lord says, I am Jesus who you are persecuting. It's hard for you to kick against the goats. You know what he's trying to tell us? Why are you doing it the hard way? Why don't you pay attention and listen? And guess what Paul did? Saul, his name was changed. He says, okay, I'm about ready to listen. You've shown me I'm, I'm doing it the wrong way. You've knocked me down. you got my attention. What is it you want me to do? And the Lord heard, told, told me. And that's what happened to me. Lord, what is it you want me to do? And I'm so ordinary, you know. Get on the altar. Well, down the altar, they said some 14-year-old kid put his hand on me and started praying for me, telling me about Jesus. I said, get away from me, kid. <laughs> <laughs> then they sent a dear old gentleman, my grandpa. He was a plumber. He came up, put his hand on me, and said, let me tell you about Jesus. I said, what do you do for a living? I'm a plumber. So I started listening. I don't respect no little kid. Some not little study little fourteen year old. But this plumber. He was a construction worker. I, I like those I like construction workers. I mean they understand. I understand we understand each other. You you get your knuckles banged up and then you go get drunk and <laughs> human beings. But I was so hard-headed. But I made my mind up that day. Whatever it takes, Lord. Okay, if you want me to listen to a snotty nose kid, I will. But you're going to help me. So he sends an old plumber that can sit down and talk to me and tell me the same thing the kid can talk to me about. But I have more respect for the plumber. So I listen to him and I pray. I got up from that altar and they said, well, we're starting a church because this was uh, in a motel, Sunburst Hotel. And they said, well, they're starting a church. I said, I don't know what all that means. What do you want me to do? They said, just start coming. So I start coming. They start talking about paying my money. You know what I said? Because I was reading uh, self-help things. I said, praise God, I want to give my money. Because all these guys I talked about were givers. And there's a principle even for non-believers. So the first thing they said, well, God wants 10% of your money. I had no problem at all. None. I paid tithes from the day I've been saved to this day and more. Louise and I pay more. That's fine. That's what's on us. But we've prospered. Oh, yeah. I had my mind made up, Robert. And because of that, just simply following God. Man, there's a joy, there's a peace. And he's an abundance. There's an abundance that chases you down and catches you. And that's what Saul was saying. Oh, I've been doing it wrong. And you're showing me the right way. And it's going just the opposite. 
All right, just show me, God. What do you want me to do? And God told him, and he started to do it. Now, what about you? Do you believe enough in God to live out your life according to His will? Man, listen to what I just said. Do you believe enough in God to live out your life according to His will? In other words, make your stand. Make up your mind. Whatever you want me to do, Lord, I'll do if I know it's you. That's what I said. To this day, I've never backed down from that. In fact, I was sitting here this morning and God told me to do something. I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to do it when the service is over. I said, thank you, God, for He wanted me to give somebody some money. I said, thank you, God, for telling me. Because whatever it is you want me to do, if I know it's you, why would you not want to do what God wants you to do? Well, I'll tell you possibly why. In Matthew 26. Verse 38. I know everybody's scrambling at once. How could you guys sit here and just look there? Huh? You got a Bible, hold it up. You got a Bible, hold it up. Just hold up your Bible, ladies. There it goes. Huh? If you don't have one, I don't know why you don't, but that's your choice. I love this. That's okay, I was there. I was that square, square peg around all Nobody's going to tell me what to do. I'll do it my own way. That's fine. You go right ahead. And you're going to, you, people are going to pass you by. The joy of the Lord is going to get a hold of them. And you're going to, what happened to me? I went through the dreams. I was in the dreams. I went through church on the street. Every once in a while, I did read my Bible. I went to church all the time. I like to praise and worship. But you never made up your mind. Praise the name of the Lord. You wonder what's wrong. Matthew 26, 38. Then he said to them, this is Jesus. My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. That's when Jesus was going to get sent. The Father had a plan for him. He's starting to reveal the plan. He's going to have to die. He knew that all along, but he didn't have to face it till now. Now he's got to face it. He went a little further, fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to look at the disciples and found them asleep. And said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? I'm experiencing that, in a way. Man, I go home and I'm surveilling. <coughs> oh, God, help me here. I know what you want me to do, but i got to have the answer. I said you will, not my will, but show me. Man, I'm grieved. I'm swept over this thing. I come back down here and see the disciples. <sighs> I love that. I do. Honestly, I do. How many understand what I'm talking about here? Through the trials, through the struggles. Then I go, okay, so I go back and I'll pray some more. Then all of a sudden, God, I want your will. Then that joy of the Lord gets a hold of me. By the way, if this is God's will, if God's for you, what on earth can be against you? And we're seeking His will anyway. And that's all He wants to do is to reveal Himself to us. So His will may be done. Because the Lord helps me, I'll not be dismayed. I'll set my face like flint to do His will. And then I will triumph by doing is well. God and Father never gave him any more than he could handle. Yes, there's going to be times that we're going to have to struggle, but I'm going to tell you something. If you pay attention, God wants me to struggle. I don't want to do that. How do you know you don't want to do that? How do you know he has got something better coming out of those struggles? Well, I don't know if I want that or not. Well, how do you know what you want? Well, I don't want that. Well, how do you know? Apostle Paul was doing it wrong. Then when he got saved, he had some struggles. He's I counted all but dumb. For the struggles and problems I'm having. Now, how can that be? Let me tell you something. You start drinking that new wine, and that Holy Ghost gets holy, and God's perfecting you and giving you some struggles as you pay attention. And all of a sudden, when the struggle's over, he says, good for me that I've been afflicted and I learned thy statues, thy ways. Then you start to understand it's the best thing that happened to you. And it ain't going to last forever. And by, when you get through it, 
Ladies, quit having kids. Man, what kind of a struggle is that? Man, I'm a dumb male. I don't know anything about that, other than I understand it. My mom told me about it, what it was, what it was like to get me, because I, I had a big head and I was nine pounds something. She says, oh, my land, son. But then, then, then she loved me. She said, you're the ugliest kid, no. She said, you got a pointed head, but I loved you. And I'm thinking, man, how can an ugly baby like me, or whatever, you know, how can my mother love me? And what she had to go through to have me. And the joy that, that came in her heart by looking at me. Pray, Lord. My mother always did love me. She always told me I was good looking, handsome, all that stuff. So that's what Jesus did. Not my will, but thy will be done. And it was when his disciples came and found them, when he came and found they were sleeping, he said to Peter, could you not watch for one hour? And he came a second time. As he went back and he prayed and said, Oh, my Father, this, if this cup cannot pass for me unless I drink it, you will be done. And he came and found them asleep, for their eyes were heavy. Then he went on about his way. Then the, in Hebrews 12, 2, it says, For the joy that was set before him, he was able to endure the cross. Ladies, I know if any of you are going up and down like yo-yos, but when you have those kids, you forget the pain. And you look at that new thing that's been born. To me, they're ugly as sin, but to you, they're not. I mean, that amazes me. It truly does. But it's part of you, and God put that in you. Listen to me. Why would we not want to sell out when God gives us a joy far greater than any joy you could ever have by serving Him? And if we got to travail a little bit, we're going to grow through it. We need to make up our mind. I mean, what I'm talking about. Make up our mind. You know, Daniel, Shadrach, and Meshach, and Abednego, when they were taken into captivity, I can't tell you what Gator told me this morning. <laughs> anyway, they said, wait a minute. We're in captivity, and they were gifted, and they were going through the, their kind of program to help them to become what uh, King Nebuchadnezzar wanted them to be. But he, he gave them the king's portion to eat. And Daniel made up his mind. Listen to this, Daniel 1.8. That you know, was prophetic, Robert, that song, because this is what was on my heart, by the way. Daniel 1.8, Daniel made up his mind not to defile himself by eating the food and the wine given to them by the king. And he asked the chief official for permission to eat other things instead. And of course, he had to make a stand. He had to make up his mind. Because he had his mind made up, God gave favor to him by the chief official. And he says, but I'm going to check you with other guys and if they look fatter and more healthy than you. He says, I, I can't let him do it. The king will kill me. He says, give us a shot. And of course, by eating God's diet, by serving God, by feeding yourself full of the word of God, by drinking that new wine, you're going to be healthier and you, the people are going to see it in you. I'm going to understand what I'm talking about here. And sure enough, they made up their mind. And man, they were happier and fatter, and that's what the Bible says, because they're eating vegetables. Now, I'm not saying we have to eat vegetables. Some of us might need that. Some of us would panic if we had to eat vegetables. <laughs> Lord, thanks, if we had to get rid of our Cheetos, our Doritos, <laughs> our Twinkies, and our Pop, and oh my land, and our macaroni. <laughs> what would happen to us? Man, I'll tell you what happened to you. You'd, you'd start, you'd get healthier. Feel better. And then your knees wouldn't be so messed up. I mean, I'm talking about. We said, why would our knees be messed up? 
carrying all that. If you're carrying it out, 100